In this video, we are going to look at factorizing and we're going to focus on the highest common factor. You will find this on page 100 in the Namibia Ordinary Level Mathematics textbook Y equals MX plus C to success. But let's first look at the introduction. Algebraic manipulation factorize. Algebraic manipulation involves the rearrangement or rearranging of algebraic expressions, often into a simpler form which is more easily handled and dealt with. During this rearrangement, the value of the expression does not change. Factorizing. In section 3.1, we learned how to multiply a monomial by a polynomial, for example this, we also expanded products of algebraic expressions, two brackets, into this. We will now learn how to carry out the reverse of process. For example, expressing a linear expression as a product of its factors. This process it is called factorization. So if I must multiply out the brackets, then we will say find the product or expand. But if I give you this, and I want you to go back to the brackets, I will say factorize. Just take note. In this case, it was one term and it became three terms. But after I factorize, I made the three terms one term again. So factorize is the reverse of expanding brackets. So it's, for example, writing this in the form this. Okay. Now, in this video, we are going to focus on the highest common factor. The first step of factorization is to take out the highest common factor of the terms and place it in front of the bracket. The expression inside the bracket is obtained by dividing each term by the highest common factor. Now, factorize. There is your two terms. So write the coefficients of the terms as prime factors. Okay, so if I now write this prime factors, can you still remember the prime factors? Say it's for example if I had this and I say 16 and I take the prime numbers, 2 can go in 8, 2 can go in 4, 2 can go in 2, 2 can go in 1, so it's 2 to the power of 4. That's the answer. Okay, and the same there. And then find out which factors are common. So take only the bases that occur in both terms and take the one with the smallest index. So, therefore, if I look at these twos, yes. Is there threes in both? No. Is there a's in both? Yes. Is there b's in both? Yes. So I take the two, but the smallest exponent, that will be three. Okay, so that's why I get eight. I take the a and the smallest exponent will be two. I take the b and the smallest exponent will be one. And now I'm basically, this is my highest common factor. And now to get the answers inside the bracket, I'm going to take this, divide by the highest common factor, that's what I wrote there, this, divide by the highest common factor, and then I will just simplify this division, and this will be my answer. The expression had two terms, after being factorized is as one. Okay, and I can test it by multiply, multiply, and see if I get this again. Okay, you can stop the video, and you can do number 1a as well as number c as well as number e. Okay, let's mark that one bit. Okay, I'm going to do it here on top. So let's start. Try now 12. Division here. Okay, if I start with the first one, number 1a. So if I have 5a minus 10b. So what you can do this long process, but you can already see it's just 5. Is there an a in both? No. Is there a b? No. So it's just a number. And if I say 5a divide 5, I just get a. And I say negative 10b divide 5, I get negative 2b. And that will be the answer. Okay. And then I, I will look at number C. 
So it's 6x squared minus 4y. So again, the biggest number is 2. Is that an x? Or? No, it's just 2. So if I take this, divide this, it will be 3x squared. And if I take this, divide this, it will be negative 2y. Okay. And then the last one is number E. So if I'm having number E, so it's 7x3y plus x2y2. And again, if I look, no, there's not a number, but um, x, yes, there's an x and a y. So I can take out x and y. And what is the smallest exponent? 2 or 3? It's 2. What's the smallest exponent? 1 or 2? It's 1. And if I divide this by this, I get 7. Two of the x's cancel out, but there's still one left. The y cancel out. And then plus, and then this cancel out. But look, y2, so there's one y left. And that will be my answer, 7x plus y. Okay. Let's move to a bit more complicated ones. Okay, I want you to again stop the video and I want you to do, let's just see number two. Um, I think I'm going to do this one on the longer method. So number two E, try and make sure you are taking the highest common factor out and number B. Okay, and then you can stop the video again. So. I'm just going to move this down. So if I look at number 2, and I look at number E. So it's 56xy squared minus 28x squared yz. Okay, now again, I just want to show you, if you really hope you are having the biggest number, just take this. So if you're just going to say, okay, if I say 56 divided by 2, I will get 28. Divide 2, 14. Divide 2, 7, 7, 1. So this is going to be, let's just write it, 2 to the power 3 times 7. If I do the same of 28, start again, 2, 14, let's just go back there, 2, 7, 7, 1. So it's going to be 2 to the power of 2 times 7. Now if I must look here, what is in both? 2 is in both, yes. Okay, so if I first going to find here, 2 is in both. Is 7 in both? Yes. What is the smallest exponent? 2. So it's going to be 4 times 7, which is 28. But that was just to help you. If you've struggled, you can do it like this. Is there an x in both? Yes. Is there a y in both? Yes. A z? No. What is the smallest exponent? This is 1 and this is 1. Okay. So if I take this, divide by this, then what do I, uh, what am I going to get? I'm just going to get, so in this case, I just want to see if this was number 2e. I'm going to just get 2, and one of the y's is going to be left. In this, it's just 1. There's going to be a x left, the y cancel, and there's going to be a z left. And that's going to be your final answer. And then number 3b. So if it's 72 a squared b plus 36 a b squared minus 18 a squared b squared. Now in this one, this is now number 3b. So if I look at this one, what is the biggest number? Always test if 18 can go. That just like 28 you were testing there, so it's going to be 18. Then is there a in both? Yes, the smallest one's a 1. Is there a b in both? Yes, and the smallest one is also going to be a 1. And if I'm going to divide that, I'm going to get 4. There's an A left, okay? And if I'm going to divide this, I'm going to get um, 36. I'm going to get a 2, the A cancel, and there's a B left. 
And if I divide this, this is just, oh, it's going to be a negative. It's going to be just a negative A and B, and that's the final. Okay, and then the last one I want to show you. Um, sometimes, although this is just one, two terms, but do you see that that brackets are exactly the same? Okay, so if you look at this one, you take out the bracket as a common factor, and then you still divide. So 2A is left, 2B. I just want to read for you this before I give you an example. The common factor in a polynomial does not have to be a monomial. For example, this is what I'm showing you here. So um, it can be a bracket, is a bracket which is common to both terms, which we'll take out then. Okay, I want you to finish this um, by doing number A and number D. And again, I'm just going to get space. Okay, so if, if I look at number A, it's going to be P X plus Y plus Q X plus Y. And again, there's two terms, and can you see the brackets? They are exactly the same. So I'm going to get X plus Y, and if I divide this cancel, what's left P? And if I divide this cancel, so what is left? Q. And then the last one is going to be number D. So if I'm having A, 2A minus 1, minus 4, 2A minus 1. So the same here, do you see the brackets? They are exactly the same, so take it out. And if I divide what is left A, and if I divide what is left negative 4. And again, that's my final answer. In the next video, we will look at grouping.